Now for the next question, let us look at our total sheet again. What we have here is 15,000 number of long chain iodine molecules, which are opaque, are arranged parallel on a transparent thin film of length 1 inch. Let the film is illuminated by a light of wavelength 5600 angstrom. How many bright spots will be observed on the screen? Level their order. Let's take this to our slide. So this is our question number 5. So what it is saying is there is a transparent thin film and which is of length 1 inch. So it's like there is a transparent thin film and its length is 1 inch. And then 15,000 long chain iodine molecules are arranged parallel on the film. So it's like this. How many such molecules? 15,000. So what they would do is they would create a, a diffraction grating. How? Because as it says, these iodine molecules are opaque. So they, so this thin film is transparent. And then when these opaque straight molecules are placed, then these opaque molecules would work like a non-transparent area. And then there will be alternative transparent, non-transparent, transparent, non-transparent, non and very large numbers. So it would work like a and in one inch, we have 15,000 molecules would be very, very small. Now, what would be the grating element of this arrangement? What is grating element? Grating element is like, what is the consecutive distance between two consecutive such iodine molecules? What would that be? So, in one inch, so the grating element D is, in one inch, you have 15,000. So, this is equal to? 2.54 cm divided by 1499. So this is the grating element or D. The grating equation D sin theta is equal to n lambda. So to understand the origin of this equation or what does this equation represent, please look at the lecture video on the diffraction. So n is the order of the diffraction maximus. So if you like, here is the diffraction grating and then here is the screen when that happens and there is a monochromatic light coming in and what you see is the diffraction pattern is like this very nice arrangement of bright spots well separated from each other on the two sides of the center spot and this is n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and so forth then this is n is equal to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so forth so what it is asking is given this is the d given lambda 5 6 0 0 angstrom what is the maximum n what is the maximum order of the spot that you can see so what would be the maximum n because d and lambda are fixed so sine theta when sine theta is maximum and when that happens means sin theta is maximum is 1 so n is equal to d by lambda so this is 254 cm 149995600 x and this is equal to 3.024 so that means which is nothing but 3 in integer number so that means how many spots should be observed first you will see n is equal to 0 which is the central spot then on the either side you will see three spots so how many so how many such spots would you see so number of bright spots will be one plus on the two sides which is equal to seven so that many bright spots you will see that ends our question number five and let's look at our next problem question number six is prove that for white light whose wavelength range is from four thousand to seven thousand angstrom the second and third order spectrum will partially overlap for any grating. So this is our question number six. Wavelength range 4000 to 7000 angstrom. And it says second order and third order spectrum will overlap. How to show that? So let's find out that what is the angular separation for the second order and for the third order. For this range of wavelengths what does this mean it means let's say here is like the earlier problem here is the diffraction grating here is the screen 
then say for the lowest wavelength so that means 4000 angstrom the second maxima is here and for the 7000 wavelength the second maxima is here so this is the range of the second maxima so 4000 7000 this is for second order maximas in this region then again for the 4000 angstrom you will get the third order maxima where would that be if it needs to overlap then what it should happen so that's the 4000 and this is the 7000 and this range is the third order maximums so if something like that happens then what you see you see that in this region the second order and the third order actually overlaps and that's what we need to see if that happens or not so the formulas that we need to use are so the condition here is again d sine theta is equal to n lambda so here we are talking about these angles so theta is equal to sine inverse what is d d is the property of the grating the grating element the separation between two consecutive transparencies within the diffraction grating now let's calculate this so what is theta one two for the first wavelength and the second order is sine inverse n is equal to 2 lambda is equal to 4000 angstrom and for a given d so that's so we have this is the theta so how much is this this is equal to sine inverse 8000 angstrom by d similarly for 7000 this it would be sine inverse 7 into 2 so 14,000 angstrom divided by d. For the third, theta would be sine inverse 3 into 4,000. So 12,000 angstrom by small d. So for the second wavelength and third for a maxima, theta 2, 3 is sine inverse 3 into 7,000, 21,000 angstrom divided by d. So let's come back. And indeed, from these different values, what you see is a picture something like this here. So let us draw the picture again for clarity. So here is our diffraction grating. So let's say this is, this is theta 1, 2. This is theta 1, 3. This is theta 2, 2. So here is an inverse. And then, <coughs> so here it's like 8,000. So here it's like sine inverse 8000 by d here sine inverse 14000 by d then this is 12000 so so theta 1 3 is 12000 so it would come somewhere in between here so it would come somewhere in between here and then 21000 would come somewhere here so this is theta 1 3 this is theta 2 3 and indeed you see a region of overlap here so how much is this this is sine inverse 12000 by d and this is sine inverse 21000 by d so this proves that for this white light second order and third order maximus overlap so let's look at the seventh problem here it's about resolving power a plane transmission grating has three 300 rulings per millimeter determine the dispersive power of violet and red light for second order diffraction pattern so let's come back to our worksheet so this is our question number seven so we have a diffraction grating with 300 rulings per millimeter this would imply that the the grating element so this would imply that the grating element d is equal to per millimeter so 1 millimeter divided by how many 300 rulings so 300 minus 1 dispersive power is d theta by d lambda is equal to n divided by d cross where does this come from it comes from the grating equation d sine theta is equal to n lambda if you take the differentiation on the both side then you get d cross theta d theta is equal to n d lambda implies d theta by d lambda is equal to n by d cos and this term is called the dispersive power what does this term say this term says that given the wavelength spread 
t lambda how much would be the spread of a diffraction maxima of order n at an angle theta so this problem is very straightforward you just have to calculate for the violet lambda is equal to 4000 angstrom the dispersive power d theta by d lambda is equal to n d cos theta is equal to n is 2 because here it says second order diffraction pattern so n is 2 and d is 1 centimeter millimeter divided by 299 to cos theta now how much is cos theta that we can find out from this equation so sine theta is equal to n lambda by t implies cos theta is equal to square root of 1 minus n lambda by 2 d so put these values you get 6158.79 radian per centimeter similarly for lambda is equal to 6 3 2 8 angstrom d theta by d lambda is equal to so these are the two results and this ends our question number seven next we go to question number eight the last problem of the so in the problem number eight we have a plain transmission grating you can just resolve two spectral lines of wavelength 5499.5 and 5500.5 angstrom in the first order diffraction pattern determine the minimum order the same grating can resolve while using another pair of wavelength so let us take this problem to our worksheet so this is our last problem question number so we are given the wavelengths lambda is equal to 5499.5 and 5500.5 and we have a transmission grating which can just resolve these two wavelengths in the first order diffraction pattern so n is equal to 1 and we have the resolving power lambda by d lambda is equal to so we have this resolving power lambda by d lambda is equal to n capital n so here for this grating this capital n is not given we have to find this so n is equal to 1 is the order which gets resolved to find out n capital n the number of total numbers of lines on the grating is equal to lambda by n d lambda so in this case how much is lambda lambda is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 divided by 2 and that turns out 5500 angstrom d lambda is 1 angstrom so n is equal to 1 d lambda is equal to 1 so here 1 this is 5500 so n is equal to 5500 so that's result number result part 1 then it says it the minimum order the same grating can resolve while using another pair of wavelengths so this is like case one case two lambda one is equal to six five zero zero lambda two is equal to six five zero zero point five and we are trying to find out what is the minimum now in this case lambda is equal to six five zero zero point two five it's the average of this two and d lambda is equal to zero point zero 0.5 angstrom so from this formula here what we get is n is equal to lambda by d lambda 1 over capital n so 6500.25 0 0.5 into 5500.5 and this turns out to be is equal to 2.36 so that means all the so in terms of integer value this is but that means this n here it turns out now when we have n given as now as we have n is equal to 2.36 so what this calculation is saying is now n is an integer value and has to be an integer value so these parameters is saying that n could be as low as 2.36 but what is the minimum that is 2.36 but as n has to be integer now this result n is equal to 2.36 so all the orders diffraction maximum orders above this value would be resolved so what are the integer values above this so those integer values are 3 4 5 6 and so forth. this is the lowest n value that these parameters can give so above all these which are integer and would be resolvable a 3 4 5 6 7th order diffraction maxima should be resolved so what is the minimum of all those and that minimum is 3 so our result is that because n needs to be a integer only that minimum integer value 
that is more than 2.36 is 3 so minimum diffraction order that can be resolved is 3 so this ends our tutorial number 5